What's up everybody? Today we are talking about FPV drones. It's like a regular drone, but cooler. So let's just get into it. All right, so if you don't know what FPV drones are or what they can do, I will put a few clips right here. If you've never seen these before, it's by a YouTuber named Johnny FPV. He is, in my opinion, one of the coolest FPV drone peoples out there. Uh, I absolutely love his stuff. It's actually kind of what inspired me to get an FPV drone. Uh, so today, basically, we're just gonna get into what exactly you need to build your own FPV drone because when I was building mine, the biggest issue I had was trying to figure out exactly what I need to build this. And there wasn't very many YouTube videos on that. So I'm just gonna go over the basis of what you need and what each component does. Yeah, let's just get into it. So as you can see here, there are a lot of components uh, to this drone and they're all pretty essential, to be honest. This setup was around $500, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. Um, and you can get a little bit cheaper or not, but I bought these components because I can either upgrade the cheap parts later without having to build a new drone, or you know they work well right now and will work well later. Let's start with the frame. So the frame is obviously the, the body, the piece that holds everything together. And you don't really wanna cheap out and get a really cheap one because it may basically just be plastic and it'll break when you crash. If you're just starting out like I am and you are okay with having to buy a new frame when you crash and it breaks, uh, then so be it, you can get them for like $10. Uh, but mine was around $40, it feels really strong. I can't tell you if it's real carbon fiber or like some fake carbon fiber print that's on it, but it does feel pretty strong. Uh, if I crashed it, it probably wouldn't break. So that's a good thing. And then with the frame, it does depend on what size you get. So mine is a five inch frame and that will depend on the size of props you get for it as well, uh, because you have to correlate some of these parts with each other or else it won't fit. Uh, so there are different sizes, there's different lengths, there's different heights. So this one's pretty long as you can see. Uh, there are ones that maybe even go to like right here that are a lot shorter. And then next part that we have is uh, the ESC, which is the electronic speed controller. Now, when I bought mine, I bought a bundle. I bought a speed controller and a flight controller, which we'll get into next, that stack on top of each other. As you can see here, there's two boards. And the reason I bought that is because I wanted to make sure they would stack, and I also wanted to make sure they would work well together and easy together. The nice thing about what I got is there's a little cable here, right here, that plugs into the ESC so I don't have to solder extra wires to connect the two together. So it was kind of a bonus. Now, what the speed controller does is kind of what it sounds like. It gives power to the motors, makes them spin at certain speeds, which depends on the controller. You know, if you're going full throttle or, you know, half throttle, or you're going left, right, up, down, you know. Now the next part is the flight controller. Now the flight controller is kind of what it sounds like, it controls the flight. It's the brains of the operation. You'll make a movement on your controller sticks, it'll get sent to the receiver, and then your flight controller will decide what it needs to do. So if you throttle up to go up straight, it'll tell the controller to tell the motors to all spin together at the same time at the same speed to go straight up. But it, it is the brains of the operation and it has a gyro on top which will tell it if it's leaning left, right, up, down, so that it kind of knows what it's doing. So that's kind of the flight controller. So the next thing is the motors. So the motors are kind of tricky in a way. You can either pick what type of battery you want first or pick what type of motors you want first, but they do kind of depend on each other. There are certain motors that work with 4S, 5S, or 6S batteries. If you wanna know more about batteries, I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube videos that can explain them better than me, but there are different KVs is what they're called uh, for the motors that will depend on what type of battery you want. Mine is a 5S setup and the speed of the motors is dependent on what type of battery I got. So I kind of picked what kind of battery I wanted and then I picked the motors from there. The KV 
is essentially the speed of the motors, how fast they can go at top speed. Now, the higher the KV, the less torque and acceleration will have. So if you wanna be able to take off extremely fast or do extremely fast movements, you're going to want a lower KV. However, you do sacrifice top speed. So I kind of got motors that are the in-between that are still really fast, but also have a high top speed. Because if you get ones that are too low, you're gonna have a lot of acceleration, but you're not gonna be able to go very fast. So it just kind of depends on what you want. The next thing is what goes on the motors, which are the propellers. Now, the propellers depend on the size of your frame. So if your frame is really small, but you get really wide or big rotors, they're probably gonna hit each other and that's not gonna work out. So just look out for that. See what propellers might work best for your motors. The next thing is fairly important for the FPV part of the drone, which is the camera, which is right up front here. It's very small. However, there are different sizes of cameras and you have to make sure the one you get fits in your drone because some might be wider, taller, etc., than you know others or even smaller and they may not fit in the spot where your camera goes. The next thing is related to the FPV camera, which is the video transmitter. Mine is in the back here. That's what this blue antenna is for. Uh, that's what transmit the signal to my goggles. So what the video transmitter does, also called the VTX, is basically just transfers the signal of your video from your camera to your goggles. It's pretty simple. It's definitely a necessary part to have on the drone. And then next is the receiver. Now the receiver is going to go on your board and that's going to connect your drone to the controller so that when you make a movement on your controller, it'll tell your drone what to do. Kind of important to have so your drone can do things. Usually uh, when you pick a receiver, you have to pick one that matches the controller. So I bought a FR Sky or however you say it, uh, controller, which means I had to buy one that was like an FR Sky receiver so that they would match up. Some of them don't match up with other brands or other types, so just make sure you get one that matches your controller. Uh, the next thing is a LiPo battery, which we kind of mentioned already. It does depend on the motors. Uh, mine's a 5S. You can get 4S, 5S, and 6S. Uh, the battery should get a little bit bigger as you go to the 6S because it just basically means there's another layer of batteries in series. Like I said, more videos on YouTube about it. Uh, the next thing is the controller. I bought a pretty cheap one. It takes an 18650 battery on the back here. It has a little screen up front. Uh, basically with the controller, uh, you just kind of pick which one suits you best. There are higher end ones, there are lower end ones, there's ones with more features, less features, etc. And then we get into goggles. Now, goggles are a really hard thing to pick from because there's so many of them. But the ones that you probably are going to want are very expensive probably more than it costs to build your drone. The price of those is usually around 700 or more dollars, and you get a lot of benefits with the more expensive one. If I'm just starting out, so I don't need a pair of $800 goggles, and you know, eventually I can upgrade those, no problem, it's not gonna be a big deal. Uh, some goggles come with a built-in transmitter uh, that will connect to your VTX, your video transmitter on board, and some of them also have batteries that it comes with or built in. Uh, however, the higher end ones don't usually come with a built in battery. It comes with a strap that straps on the side of your head with a battery. And some of them may or may not come with a video transmitter built in because with the higher end goggles, sometimes they want to give you the option to buy a higher end video transmitter so that you can have long range signals or you're able to uh, swap out the video transmitter in the goggles. So it just depends on what you're looking for. The last component that goes on the drone or has to regarding the drone is this fat capacitor on the back. So the one I have is uh, I believe 35 volt 1000 microfarad. It's not necessary to have the capacitor. However, it does help. It helps kind of with random surges or high surges of energy that may try to go to the board. Um, without this, it, you can have a fire or you know overcharge or overloaded 
circuit or whatnot. Um, I'm not an electrical engineer, so I'm not gonna explain this because I just barely know why it's useful. And if I'm wrong, I, I might be phrasing that wrong. And if I am, please let me know and I can fix that in the description, but I'm pretty sure that's the way it's phrased. And then lastly, um, you gotta have something to charge your batteries with. So just buy a, a decently, moderately, not ch too cheaply priced battery charger for your LiPo battery. Um, it does have to be specifically for your, your battery. So like I said, there's 4S, 5S, 6S, and if you buy a battery charger that only goes to the 4S and you have a 5S battery, you're not gonna be able to charge it. So just make sure you get one that fits your battery. And then my drone does have a top to it, but I figured it would be a lot harder for you to see it. And that's kind of it. Um, I'm gonna put a whole list of everything that goes on my drone in the description below. Like I said, it's a very medium based and priced drone. Uh, it was around 500 to maybe 550 with the controller and the goggles and everything on the drone, um, but you can go cheaper. I just found that the parts that I have all work well together and I spend a lot of time and research figuring it out. Now, if you need some help picking out drone stuff or you don't really know what you need or what you can get or if you have a budget and whatnot, I use the website getfpv.com. They're really awesome. They have a chat service that connects you with a community member, not necessarily somebody who works there, but an expert in the field that's a part of the community. So that's who I contacted to get help for literally everything. Hopefully this helps you find what you need for a drone. Like I said, everything's in the link in the description if you need any of this stuff or wanna build this specific drone. I really enjoyed this, it was a fun process. You do need to know how to solder a little bit um, and a little bit about electronics before getting into it. You can buy a pre-built drone, they do have those available, uh, but if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. But if you like this type of content, uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you wanna get updated for all the new videos coming out. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.